Welcome back, my friends. Today's episode is all about the thrill of the fight and those who thrive in the glory of those high-pressure situations. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's hop right back in. Looks like the enemy team has used all their resources on killing Akali and Ash, so Lemon Hope is free to run them down. Check this out, so Floyd is teleporting in and pops Predator and Q to run at the speed of light towards Darius. He gets the max range facebreaker and lets the Darius Q hit him before throwing out the Haymaker. He's not done yet though, and similarly enough to Olaf, Set only gets stronger the lower he is. Press off. I'm carrying. Next up, looks like a dragon fight just went horribly for Irelia's team, but that means they don't have much left to stop hacking. We're starting off this play with a little one-on-one -on -one action. Note that Yasuo does have a blue buff and watch the minimap for the rest of the players trying to collapse. Next up, we got Madara showing off his Jace and the ridiculous value of this Eclipse. This is one angry Darius. He's popping off with the resets not only from his ult but his ghost as well. Add Triforce on top of that and no one is escaping his wrath. Yeah. 
You have not lost health. How are you still alive? How are you still alive? Please tell me you kill him here. Unfortunately, Mordekaiser did have a Thornmail, but still, a valiant effort. Next up, it's Duty versus Two, and some good map awareness lets him get this massive gap between him and Cho'Gath, which lets him take Hecarim out of the fight. Also, if we look at their items, Duty is the only one who has backed, and uh, yeah, he's got a full pickaxe. Moi, le Kazakh, c'était euh, une histoire va être comme pour toi, c'est toi qui t'exile. Hein. Oui, non, tu es. Pourquoi il fait le tour l'autre Ah putain, mais ils sont là Très ils sont là. Okay, that kick alley -oop was so clean. And speaking of clean, here's Nathathon with some super speed Triforce Camille kiting. He doesn't have the healing of Sunder, but he's still got a lot from Grasp. Okay, uh, Nath, what is this? You distract them so much as you can, so I'm going to go to This is Zed King again, but this time with a lethal tempo Rageblade Irelia build. And you know, when in doubt, just auto it out. Uh oh. Oh shit. Nice. Shaco's roaming down bada follow. I'm coming. A bit run up slow. towards him, run up to the mouthwar. Yeah. I'm really slow. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, oh my Shaco, god. Shaco, Shaco. Shaco. Okay. Chanbon's got moves for days. As he exits Mega, watch how he uses the big speed boost from the transformation and his three-hit passive. Oh my oh, god! Lucky. Ow. Oh. Oh my god. What? We one dive, guys. <laughs> flash, 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 flash. Hit the stun? Oh, you don't hit the stun, though!
so it's not like this Renekton is weak, but this Riven's got triple buffs, and the Death Stance is healing her up through the Executioners. And if we look at the base, well, Renekton's just not allowed to chase. Tenkudu has yet to back, meaning he's up on EXP, and that tiny bit of EXP makes a massive difference. What is he doing? You're actually clean. You're so clean. Holy Hecarim is coming up through the tribe, but Jax has already fully stacked his passive off the tower. After he deals with his first problem, watch how Z-Blue plays around Camille's Q timer and the sheer value of this pink ward in the bush. Just want to point out Final Sunrise heals through all of that through Lee Sin's Executioner's Calling. Oh, also, let's speed it up a bit because he's so far ahead that Vayne's actually already respawned and wants to go for round two. Right? Right? 
Thank you so much for watching. That is going to do it for today's episode all on fighters. Remember to drop a like if you did enjoy and subscribe if you want to see some more. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and have yourself a wonderful day.